If you recall when we talked about a normal implication, P implies Q, we've seen before that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. So I'm going to make use of that logical equivalency when I try to go out and prove things. In particular, my first goal is going to be to try to prove an implication. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show, prove an assumption leads to a conclusion. But what I'm going to do is treat this as the other way around. I know that P implies Q is the same thing as not Q implies not P. That is, I'm instead going to go and try to prove the contrapositive. I'm going to try to prove not Q implies not P. And that's the way I'm going to demonstrate that P implies Q. So let's see an example. In this theorem, I'm saying if the square is even, then N itself is also going to be even. And I want to note carefully, this is different from the theorem that we've seen in a previous video. This is not saying if N is even, then N squared is even. It's the other way around. It's saying if N squared is even, then N is going to be even. I'm going to just try to use a direct proof and show you why it might be challenging. So my assumption might be that n squared is even, which is going to be that n squared is going to be twice some k for some k. I'm not going to write all my symbols down because this is my playing around step. I don't have to be all that precise. All right, and I want to say something about n. I've got the square here, so maybe what I should be doing is taking a square root of both sides. That might give me my n if I took the positive square root, for instance. But then what I have is it being like equal to root 2 times root k, which doesn't really look anything at all like being even. So assuming that my n squared was even and taking square roots just didn't leave anywhere. It's got all this messy root 2 stuff floating around. So proving it directly seems a little bit challenging. So let's get rid of that. Since proving this directly wasn't all that useful, Let's try to prove it by the contrapositive, where we're going to do it the other way around with negations. So when I write it as proof by, contradiction, by contrapositive, rather, note what happens. First of all, the, the n squared is even and the n is even, they flip orders, but they also get two noughts in. That's what happens when I do contrapositive. So in other words, I'm assuming that n is not even, and I'm trying to deduce that n squared is not even. By the way, the assumption n is not even is the same thing as n is odd. And the conclusion n squared is not even is the same as the conclusion n squared is odd. But I've actually seen that particular proof before. I've seen a proof that n is odd implies n squared is odd. And so we can sort of bring that one in. And this is the proof that we've seen before. Indeed, this claim, n squared even implies n is even, is the same claim. It's logically equivalent to n is odd implies n squared is odd. It's just that when it's written this way in its contrapositive form, it's quite tractable and we were able to do its proof almost directly. It sort of just fell out by our assumptions in a way that just wasn't true when I tried to directly prove the original. So it's a wonderful illustration of how a, a proof that's challenging and hard if you try to go and prove it's contrapositive, the contrapositive, while logically equivalent, might be much easier to prove.